All right, loves, it's your boy here, and we are back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes, and I'm gonna try to wrap this up quick so I can get back to the game. We are right now watching Game 7 for Celtics and Miami Heat. I'm pulling for the Celtics, but they could easily botch the lead that they have, so... All right, just a little basketball for y'all. All right, our legendary hero is gonna be Murr, by the looks of it. Okay, I really did not want them to do Murr. Artwork is actually a little bit wonky. Is this older Murr? Hold on. This Murr looks a little bit taller than normal. Is this supposed to be like an adult version of Murr? Because if that's the case, I, I think that's an interesting concept, but come on, man. Like Murr, again, just like with Fa, I feel like does not deserve to be a legendary. She's going to be a flying blue breath dragon. So again, like... Legendary Tiki and Legendary Fa, and now we have Legendary Murr. Why do they all have to be blue? I really don't understand. All right, she's a wind hero with the pair-up blessing for um, defense, I believe that is. Okay. So she does the split for HP and defense, and she has pair-up. <laughs> Very cute sprite, though. I'll give her that much. <laughs> with her little twin tails flying around all happy-like. All right, Godly Breath. I didn't know Murr was godly, but okay. 16 might, 1 range, minus 1 special trigger. If unit initiates combat or is in two spaces of an ally, inflicts all stats minus 5 on the foe during combat, reduces damage from attacks during combat and from AoE specials by 30%, and unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. If foe's range is 2, then gets adaptive damage. Okay, very interesting. Minus 1 special trigger. You have a player phase and an enemy phase effect on this weapon. So if she initiates, she gets the effects. And if the foe initiates and she's got an ally in two spaces, she gets the effects. So pretty nice dual phasing there. Minus five to all stats on the foe. Unconditional DR for... Well, I guess not unconditional because you got to meet one of the two requirements. But they're very easy to meet. So essentially just... 30% DR on all attacks and also AoE specials. Pretty solid. And then she makes a guaranteed follow-up, which can be a bold fighter or quick repost type of effect since it's dual phase. Pretty solid weapon. All right, we have Bonfire. We got Defense and Res Unity. All right, finally, this split defense Unity skill has been added. Not really sure if it's going to be one of her better options, although her being a flyer, she... Misses out on select A skills that you may want to give her, so I guess this is okay. She doesn't have disencounter though, which is interesting. For a flying type unit, you probably want disencounter, so I don't know, maybe Fa's disencounter with Res Up 5 is the way to go. Alright, we got Dragon Wall, and then we have Darkling Guardian. Okay. I like the icon there with Murr's wings sticking out. So at the start of the turn, if unit is in two spaces of an ally, grants defensive res up six. Foe cannot make a follow-up and warp bubble to unit for one turn. Okay, what the hell is warp bubble? Foes cannot warp into spaces within four spaces of unit. <laughs> oh, boy. Gatekeeper get wrecked. <laughs> like, that's literally why you run Gatekeeper, because he has blockage of warp effects. So I guess you could just run Murr now and have her do it. Does not affect foes with pass skills or warp effects from structures like camps and forts in rival domains. I guess that makes sense. But what this is going to mean is that effects like Bunny Sonia, who can jump around like a maniac. You got Ash, who lets everyone jump around like a maniac. Um, legendary female Byleth as well. She jumps like a maniac. So all those jumping units are not going to be able to jump. Very strong, like blockage of jumping and blockage of Kanto. Very powerful effects because you can really stop the opponents from getting a leg up on you. So I, I do like this C skill. Also with the blockage of enemy follow-ups and defensive res up 6. Pretty strong for her as a bait unit. Unfortunately, this effect does not get granted to allies, though it's only to her. If units in two spaces of an ally grants... Yeah, to unit for one turn, so only she gets the stats and the null follow-up effect, but still seems pretty good. Now, let's take a look at her animations. Oh, I, I kind of like the shininess of her dragon there. Very interesting. And then she's supported with Ephraim there for the pair-up. 
I guess that makes sense. So, older Murr, huh? Let me know in the ch chat or in the comments, what do you guys think of older Murr? Or is she even older or I am I just tripping here? I don't know. She kind of looks a little bit older to me. It's a little hard to tell. Maybe when we see the rest of her artworks, we can tell a little bit easier, but... She does look taller. I will say that much. Alright, so this is going to be our banner. So, on blue, we have Murr, of course. She's accompanied by legendary female Byleth and legendary Kata. Not too shabby of a blue pool. All of these are very recent units, and they have pretty solid effects. So, blue looking alright. Alright, then on green, we have male Byleth. We got Dagger, and we have Legendary Edelgard. Okay, Le Legendary Edelgard, <laughs> believe it or not, might not be quite as good as the other two green units here. I, I think Byleth giving the Null Follow-Up support and Dagger having Pathfinder are a little bit more useful overall than Edelgard taking triple actions with Raging Storm. Although, then again, like <laughs> Raging Storm is very good. On red, we have Priam, we got Legendary Elliewood, and we have... Namie on red. Okay. Priam and Elliewood. Elliewood is bound to get a remix eventually, though. When he does, he's going to be pretty nutty. And already still, as a supporter with granting bonus doubler to allies, he still sees a lot of use in summoner duels. So, Elliewood... I can't really knock him too bad, and he is due for a remix, but Priam, I don't really think is all that interesting, and Navy's okay. I, I don't remember what fodder skills she had, but she was just okay, to my knowledge. I believe she had some kind of true damage effect, but... Okay, so that's red. Then on colorless, we have Ascended Joshua, we got Bramimond, and we have Legendary Claude. Pretty solid pool for colorless. Bramimond, still one of the Offensive threats for defense teams that can hold up when he's accompanied by Katria for the triangle attack. Joshua's pretty good if he attacks and he is in cardinal directions of the target. He gets fire sweep, which is pretty strong. He also gets a whole bunch of other effects. He, he's pretty solid, honestly. And then Claude, of course, with his B skill. I, I think his B skill may be one of the strongest or like stupidest unique beast skills in the game so Claude certainly still holds up as far as like which colors I would say are in first place uh probably blue honestly like just because of the recency of the units and the effectiveness as well Byleth, Kata, and Murr all seem pretty good honestly so I, I would say blue is probably in first followed by huh what do I like more between red and colorless here? I, I would probably just barely give the edge to colorless, honestly. Yeah, because the combo of Claude and Joshua, I think, just outweigh Naomi and Priam. Elliewood's great, but he's not, like, more great than the other two on colorless, I would say. So, colorless is in second, red is in third, and then green's in fourth uh, overall. Or actually, is green better than red here? <laughs> I don't know, man. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Just blue's in first for me, and colorless is in second. That's really all that matters. So, is this worth summoning on? Should you spark to get a copy of Mur if you have the Fey Pass? Uh, it's probably going to be up to you. I, I think it's your call. Gatekeeper has the bonus of not only having Warp Bubble, he also has access to his C slot, unlike Mur, where her C skill is locked into having Warp Bubble. So you could give Kanto control to Gatekeeper or, I don't know, any other C skill you may want to give him. So he also grants the attack and speed up 5 support in his crazy radius of effect. So I would just, as a raw support, I think Gatekeeper is better than Murr. But Murr has way more combat potential, which I think is pretty strong. So you definitely don't want to sleep on that. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of the new Murr, Legendary Murr. I... As far as legendary heroes go, like I said, I don't really think she's one of the more interesting choices they could have went with. Feels like another Fa situation to me. But at the very least, unlike Fa, she does look different. She seems to be older here, so I will give them some props for creativity with that. 
But this is your boy Tatro signing out. I'm going to go watch the rest of the game. Hopefully, Boston was able to keep the lead and win, but I, I have no idea. So I will catch y'all again on the flip side. Take care, fellas.